Good morning students. I hope you are doing well in your studies. As the goal is very soon, so I have planned for this uh, video lesson as you know that the pandemic is still on. So we have planned that we will go on with the video lectures. In this lecture, I will explain sudden blot, which was a technique invented by Edward Sun. It is not a very old technique. Earlier in my video lectures, I have spoken about two other topics which is very related to this. First is extraction of DNA, how to open up the nucleus in the cell membrane. And then after that, getting through means if the sample is very little, going for the method of PCR. PCR is also numbers that I have already discussed with you. And then gel electrophoresis. These are very related methods. But today's focus is not on these two methods. Today's focus is sudden blot. So let me first bring you what is the technique all about. This technique, sudden blot, which was invented, was having this thing that it will be how to analyze a particular DNA sequence. Now, first let me draw a cell. When you are having a cell, this is the nucleus and the content of the nucleus, the DNA chemical structure. We know the central dogma that DNA is a double stranded chemical structure. Now, how to open up the cell membrane? We will break open, we will apply some detergent so that the, the, the cell membrane uh, breaks open and then the nuclear membrane also breaks open, releasing all the DNA content. Now, these are the DNA contents. Now, in this content of DNA, there is a particular sequence, gene sequence, which I know is there, but how to get it? How do I understand? I have my gene sequence. This is a particular sequence is there. And I know this target has to be, whether this is present in this genomic content or not, that I have to analyze it, that I will do. With the help of this method that is sudden blot, this chapter, sorry, this technique is very important to be understood because it is all related to DNA fingerprinting, which is known as DNA profile. Now, this technique is going to help us analyze particular DNA sequence, and this technique is related to DNA hybridization. Now, the next word that I have used is hybridization. Now you may ask me what is hybridization? What is the central dogma of DNA molecule? Say, helical structure is there, a double stranded uh, DNA. It is always double stranded, helical structure. And uh, the nucleic acids and nucleotides, that is ABGC, we know, joined by the uh, hydrogen bonds, two here, three here. So this is the cell, central dogma. When I see this helical structure, after denaturation, what we have done in our PCR lesson, that how to denature it, how to make the DNA, how do I get a single strand by denaturation. After that, when comes the pregnancy, then the DNA cap, uh, DNA joins in, again a nucleotide sequence is prepared, then the stretches which elongates. So that's a different process. But rejoining, that is, how do I get my two strands again? to form after denaturation, that technique is reanimate or hybridization. In this southern world, I will be focusing on hybridization and a prop. What is a prop? Prop is single stranded DNA structure or a strand that we prepare in our laboratory. And this will help us understand how do we use it to locate the particular gene sequence which is pre present there but I have to understand. I know my target gene sequence target say I know it so I am writing it my target gene sequence suppose knowing the target as ATTGAC now this is my target I have to understand what is the complementary. I have to prepare a complementary of this. And complementary base pairing rule says if it is a platform cable, that 
I have got my complementary uh, bases prepared. That means this is a prop for me which will have this is my target and this is my prop which I will use later. So let me write it T A A C T and G. This will act as a prop for me later on. So what I have got is my sample which is a mixture of all the you know milk contents are there a lot of DNA some other contents are also there. Now what I do is the DNA helper structure is very long. I need to first write on the first let me write on the first step. The first step that I have to do is breaking the fragments into smaller pieces. So how do I do it? Breaking I need a restriction enzyme. And that restriction design is endonuclease. Endonuclease will be cleaving it at particular point. I know that exonuclease will be acting at the terminal sections. I will be cleaving it at a particular point, so I need endonuclease. Restriction after breaking open the cell membrane, what I have done is I have applied my detergent and the detergent membrane is released, releasing all the genomic content. Now I have got log thread which I need to break into smaller fragments. To break it into smaller fragments, I have used a restriction enzyme. The name of the restriction enzyme is the nucleus, which is going to be at a particular point. After that, I have got smaller fragments. Now these smaller fragments will be put. Why I need this process now to be This is if you have not watched my video on the genetic I insist that you watch it because this technique should be learned early. A quick revision of the genetic that is there are electrons, there is a chamber, there are electrons, DNA is negatively charged, hence both it will move from the negative end, that is the cathode to the anode. And when it will be moving, that is when it will be doing so, I can understand that the fragments I can divide it according to the length, which is big, which is small, which is large, which is not large, which is quite medium size. So I will be getting a band. In my gel electrophoresis method, what I will achieve is this is the first well which is having all the packing set. This is known for me, this well, and the later wells will give me a particular pattern. But I do not know where is my target set. Target, this is my prop. So complementing to this will be my target gene. Where is that particular target? Suppose it is here. I will not be able to locate it. Why? Because this, first of all, it is quite invisible. Quite invisible and it is very difficult and the, taking about the resolution of the band, I will not be able to locate my target DNA sequence. This is my target, but I do not know whether it is there or not. So what I will do is I will open up the chamber. I will take out the aqueous gel. The gel that is used is aqueous gel in gel electrophoresis. I will be taking it out. Again, I will be dyeing it. For dyeing purpose, I can use it to dye. But that dye will only help me to track a particular DNA molecule, a particular strand. It will not help me to achieve the band. So that method I will do with ethereum domain. Watch my uh, video on gel electrophoresis, you will be able to understand. Ethereum domain will be binding with the DNA and will give it. But overall, my problem is how to locate this stuff. This I have to do it by another method because the gel which is used at the rose is very fragile. Once I try to open up the chamber after switching off the electric field, taking off the adverse gel will create problems for it. It might break off, it might loosen, some of the DNA fragments will not be understood also properly. So there is a big problem. To overcome this problem, what I will do is that method that will be applied that is southern blot and here the factor comes that is I will be using the microcellulose membrane. So here is my problem which I have faced and I need to resolve the problem. The problem was that how to locate my target DNA sequence, the gene sequence, the particular sequence. And I have got my band, total band from J. electrophoresis method. I know the band is there. But how to understand whether my target sequence is present there or not? That is a big question. And to understand that, I need to go for a method of hybridization.
Here comes hybridization, but before I make hybrid or hybridization, that is rejoining, I have to make the one strand works here. So this is also a problem. What I will be doing with this? I will be using another method that is southern blot. Finally, I have come to this method, southern blot. And in this method, what I need is a particular chamber prepared. This is a chamber which has got a buffer solution. You always need a buffer solution. Right now I am doing the method of southern blot. Finally, I have come to this point which I am supposed to discuss today in my class. This is the alkaline buffer that I have used. We need buffer solution so that the pH of the whole content can be maintained. So I will have buffer solution. On top of the buffer solution, I apply some sponge so that it soaks in the, the wetting nature. So that sponge I apply. And on top of the sponge comes my aqueous gel. Again that gel. What gel we have used? It's aqueous gel. On top of this gel comes the nitrocellulose membrane. The membrane is sticky and adhering in nature. It is very sticky in nature. This membrane is the nitrocellulose membrane. So what is the structure? First I put the buffer region, which is the alkaline buffer membrane. The pH the sponge is placed on top so that it soaks in the water, uh, the solid molecules and then gel which is aqueous gel and top of gel is the gel and the nitrocellulose membrane should be completely aligned. And now it is quite tough. Earlier it was only aqueous which was problem for me because taking out the aqueous with the spatula also it might break, it will stretch higher. And on top of nitrocellulose, I will put some paper towels to make it quite strong and a baby weight. Not very heavy of course. Say 50 grams weight. I put here. Now the phenomena that we need to understand here that is capillary action. Let's understand capillary action. What happens is as I am putting the weight from the top region, here in the alkaline buffer region, the molecules, buffer molecules will start moving up and penetrating through the sponge, it will enter the gel region. Again penetrating through the gel layer, it will enter the nitrocellulose layer and finally it will come. Then what am I speaking about? Along with the buffer solution, along with the buffer molecules, my DNA which is placed, I will be loading the DNA here. As in the element of I was loading it in agarose. Similarly, here after preparing the whole setup, I will load my DNA into it which will have my target sequence in it, which I do not know where it is present. I have got the gel in the first step that the whole band is ready for me. But the band, the content of the band was too fragile. So I have loaded it into this chamber along with my buffer. When I load it, all what happens is along with the buffer molecules, the DNA molecules also penetrate. DNA is also moving, buffer molecules are also moving upwards. But DNA, when it hits the gel layer, as the gel layer is sticky, it will stay there. Now it will, as my gel layer and the nitrocellulose layer was completely aligned, what happens is the DNA molecule stick to the gel layer, stick to the nitrocellulose layer, and remains there, making an exact replica of my earlier pattern. So this was my idea, of course, that was invented by Edward Sunder. The motive was, what was the motive? That pattern what I got in my gel electrophoresis method that I had my agarose gel loaded my DNA into it got the pattern but that pattern where is my target DNA I failed to understand I have to prepare the exact replica that I have right now got the exact replica how do I get it that is I have applied all the method uh, that is this nitrocellulose membrane which was aligned in the gel the DNA molecules moved up, buffer molecules also moved up, DNA remained in the nitrocellulose membrane, giving me the exact replica or the exact copy of the image that was already prepared by me during 
the geolimetrophoresis method. Geolimetrophoresis method gave me the total ban, but that time I was unable to understand that my target sequence or uh, whatever is my target in the body, whether it is present or not, and even, even if it is present, where it is exactly present. So now that I have got an exact copy, now I can rub this part that yes, my motive of this experiment through this chamber, which was multi layered, is successful. Now I have got one exact copy. And I have got a band. Let me draw something a little. Say my target sequence is here. Now I know my target is over here. But here also, a spotting is spotting is required. Because I will be using the claw. Earlier I have talked about the probe. Probe is actually the exact. Probes are actually prepared in lab. It is a single standard DNA span. And this probe that I have prepared should be exactly complementary to my target, which has already been prepared. I have to use my probe now. T A A B C T G. If it is A T T G A C, then it is T A A C T and G. This is my complementary base that I have got. Sequence, gene sequence. So it's my probe. I have to use the probe. I have got the band. I, I know the target is in here. Now here if I am exposing it to the UV rays, I can get it. I, it will locate. I will be using P32. So this will give, this is a radio uh, active isotope. I will be using phosphorus 32. I will be using because it is also present in the DNA molecule. But the problem is, right now I am still facing one problem, nuclear acid hybridization. I am still facing one problem, that is, I must exactly get this position also. And how to achieve this target right now, I have to use my probe. Probe is single standard. Here the DNA that I have got is double standard. Now that means I have to attain milk. That is, denaturation process is to take place. I will be using a buffer, denaturing buffer. So again, this buffer will be separating it, making it a single strand. And after making it a single strand, I can use my probe, which will make it a double strand. Then after making it a double strand, I will be using my radioactive isotope. The radioactive isotope cannot be used earlier because earlier it was a double stranded structure. Right now, I have to first make it single stranded, then with the help of probe, because all I need is my target started here. So without that, with the probe will not be attached to all. So it will get attached to particular because here I have to locate a particular DNA sequence. So all chemical structures when I will be the probe will be used and probe will attach to a particular DNA molecule which is my target. Because it will match with that one only, it will not match with everyone. Every strand it will not match. So here, after the whole process, now what I have done is I have used my nucleic acid hybridization, that is hybridization method, probing time I have been using it. First it was denatured, then again the single strands were joining with probe, the probe had joined. It will look at the probe will look at it. Yes, this is my matching, or this is my matching. Here, as my target is this, the probe will be matching with this strand. So it will go and edit and make a particular a double standard nuclear structure there only. And then after that, there are some very there are some ways by which one is by the P32. If I am using it, this uh, radioactive isotope can be easily uh, used. To locate the particular target DNA sequence. As this is also present, the P32 is also present in the DNA molecule uh, also, so it will be located. And now that I have right now got the exact replica. How do I get it? That is, I have acquired all the network, uh, that is, this microcellular membrane which was aligned with the gel. The DNA molecule is moved up. Buffer molecules also moved up. DNA remained in the microcellular membrane, giving me the exact replica of the exact copy of the image that was already prepared by me during.
bring the geolimetrophoresis method. Geolimetrophoresis method gave me the total ban, but that time I was unable to understand that my target sequence or uh, whatever is my target in the environment, whether it is present or not. And even, even if it is present, where it is exactly present. So now that I have got an exact copy, now I can rub this part that yes, my motive of this experiment through this chamber, which was multi layered, is successful. Now I have got one exact copy. And I have got a band. Let me draw something a little. Say my target sequence is here. Now I know my target is over here. But here also, a spotting, a spotting is required. Because I will be using the claw. Earlier I have talked about the probe. Probe is actually the exact. Probes are actually prepared in lab. It is a single standard DNA scan. And this probe that I have prepared should be exactly complementary to my target, which has already been prepared. I have to use my probe now. T A A B C T G. If it is A T T G A C, then it is T A A C T and G. This is my complementary base that I have got. Sequence, gene sequence. So it's my probe. I have to use the probe. I have got the band. I, I know the target is in here. Now here if I am exposing to the UV rays, I can get it. I, it will locate. I will be using P32. So this will give, this is a radio uh, active isotope. I will be using phosphorus 32. I will be using because it is also present in the DNA molecule. But the problem is, right now I am still facing one problem, nuclear acid hybridization. I am still facing one problem, that is, I must exactly get this position also. And how to achieve this target right now, I have to use my probe. Probe is single standard. Here the DNA that I have got is double standard. Now that means I have to attain milk. That is denaturation process is to take place. I will be using a buffer, denaturing buffer. So again, this buffer will be separating it, making it a single strand. And after making it a single strand, I can use my probe, which will make it a double strand. Then after making it a double strand, I will be using my radioactive isotope. The radioactive isotope cannot be used earlier because earlier it was a double stranded structure. Right now, I have to first make it single stranded, then with the help of probe, because all I need is my target started here. So without that, with the probe will not be attached at all. So it will get attached to particular because here I have to locate a particular DNA sequence. So all chemical structures when I will get the probe will be used and probe will attach to a particular DNA molecule which is my target. Because it will match with that one only. It will not match with everyone. Every strand it will not match. So, here, after the whole process, now what I have done is, I have used my nucleic acid hybridization, that is hybridization method, probing time I have been using it. First it was denatured, then again the single strands were joining the probe, the probe had joined, it will look at it. The probe will look at it. Yes, this is my matching or this is my matching. Here as my target is this, the probe will be matching with this strand. So it will go and add it and make a particular a double standard nuclear structure there only. And then after that, there are some very there are some ways by which one is by that P32, if I'm using it, this uh, radioactive isotope can be easily uh, used to locate the particular target DNA sequence. As this is also present, P32 is also present in the DNA molecule uh, also, so it will be located around such. That is, nucleic acid hybridization, probe was single stranded, it got, it has the complementary base pair of my target DNA sequence, so it got attached to the particular DNA molecule. Now to locate it, I have exposed it to the, uh, what to say, the X-ray film and the UV light and I have uh, applied the P32 radioactive isotope. 
which gave me a very good result that I could uh, locate the particular DNA sequence. And there are some other ways also. You can use a chemical luminance also for this purpose. There are some chemicals which will help you to uh, understand which is the target molecule because uh, target DNA sequence of a molecule by giving some light and exposure so that chemiluminance is also there. Another is uh, a particular enzyme which is used and this enzyme produces light when it is combining to the substrate. But overall the method that is applied in our labs are pathogen only radioactive isotope which is used and this process is known as uh, autoradiography and this method is generally applied in the large scale. And otherwise chemiluminance is also used and some chemicals which will be emitting light. Hence so if light is there then obviously you can understand that is the target DNA sequence. And this method is really applied to detect uh, the, the virus also that is COVID-19 virus by the kids that are used. And that crop is also giving some fluorescent color. So this method is getting used. Only that, that is a uh, different section. Uh, totally it is not the same thing but that method is used. So I hope you have understood this southern blot. After uh, covering general electrophoresis, southern blot, now we can enter that DNA fingerprinting because it's very simple to understand DNA fingerprinting. Once you understand PCR, gel electrophoresis and southern blood. PCR, uh, I have done my video on it, you can watch it. Gel electrophoresis video is also there, you can watch it and this is the southern blood. I hope you have understood this lesson and thank you everyone.